next presentation. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the second presentation for the, um, the second annual Braille Literacy Canada Symposium. My name is Kim Kilpatrick. I am now the Vice President of Braille Literacy Canada. And I'm really glad to be here today to introduce the second session. So just a reminder, the sessions will start on the hour. Presentation will be approximately 30 minutes with 15 minutes for Q&A and then a little break between. So we have three more wonderful presentations for you today. And I, I, it's my great pleasure to introduce um, Kim and Doug Walker from Hadley. So this is Braille for Everyday Use. This is a new program. That, that Hadley is uh, instituting. Uh, this is, it's a new approach to Braille. It's designed to make Braille learning more engaging, accessible and successful. And the program is allowing them to, us to better serve the growing population of or, older adults who are new to vision loss and would greatly benefit from learning Braille. So Douglas Walker has been an educator in the field of blindness for more than 30 years. And he currently serves as the co-director of research and development at Hadley. And Douglas is responsible for new concept designs as well as new content creation. He holds a bachelor's degree in education from the University of Alabama at Birmingham, <laughs> a master's in vision uh, from, from Vanderbilt University and a sort of cert Certificate in Assistive Technology from California State University in Northridge that we all call CSUN. Um, Dr. Kim Walker is the co-director of research and development at the Hadley Institute for the Blind and Visually Impaired. And she has been an educator in the field of blindness for over 30 years. Kim holds a Bachelor of Science degree in education from Tennessee Technological University and a master's degree in visual impairment from Vanderbilt University and a doctorate degree in organizational leadership from Treveca yeah, University. And I wouldn't have been able to do that without Braille. So thank goodness for that. So welcome uh, Kim and Douglas and so looking forward to your presentation. Thanks thank Kim. Thank you so much. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen here. So the miracles of Zoom are at hand here. It's always the clicking the share sound button that I miss. So I didn't miss it this time. So there we go. All right. You there? Mm -hmm. We can see it. She's visible. All right. Yeah. So um, you notice we're both co-directors of research and development. We're in the same spot in the same town. So uh, in the same house. So a, in the same house. So yeah. that's kind of, well, that's kind of interesting and scary at the same time. So uh, Hadley, um, you know, we're super excited to be here, and 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 this is going to be a lot of fun. Really enjoyed what we've heard so far, but we're super excited to be with you and to be talking about Hadley's brand new hot off the press. Braille for everyday use. Uh, yeah, we spent um, what the last two years, Kim. I think it was yes, at developing least. at least right. Uh, it's, it's flown by and it's creeped by all at the same time. So we spent the last two years developing this new approach and a tremendous amount of research and prototyping went into our new Braille for everyday use, and we hyper focused on Hadley's target market. When we did this, uh, and Hadley's target is our people new to vision loss, uh, and usually typically age 50 and older. Uh, so we researched tons of, of existing learning and, uh, and teaching models. And, you know, we asked ourselves, um, you know, but more importantly, we asked our learners, um, what do adults new to vision loss want from Braille today? And, you know, we discovered some really, really interesting things along this approach. So uh, Kim is going to talk a bit about those discoverings and those findings. Okay, next, Doug. So as Doug said, he's excited. I'm probably three times more, more excited. Oh, I love yeah. Braille, love to talk about Braille, love to teach Braille, you know, so. I'm coming from from that point. So I'll start out with um, 
what we learned, we started to dig down into our data for our former courses. And, you know, what we saw, and, and probably one of the first questions we hear is why did Hadley change or, you know, go to something new. So what we what we found was that less than 20% even completed the first book. Um, and of the of the, the books that were sent out to the learners, 50% never even started our courses. And then only about 15%, maybe a little less than 15%, actually completed the entire Braille series through contracted Braille. So, you know, when we saw those numbers, you know, it, it was very um, hard for us to, to dig down into that. But something Doug said is, we knew at that point we needed to go to our learners and say, you know, you know, why didn't you start, you know, tell us what we could do to, to help. So we went straight to the learners and some things that we heard, you know, the, this is the um, older adult new to vision loss. We heard that I'm overwhelmed. Um, there were so many timelines, there were tests. Um, I was afraid. They said they felt alone. They felt like that they had this box of materials. They didn't really know what to do with it. They felt like, hey, you've got your box, you know, send a test, call me. So they, they felt really alone. Something else that we heard over and over, and you'll hear this a little later in our presentation from one of our testers, is they were very emotional. They were scared to even approach Braille. They were afraid that they couldn't learn. Um, there were so many emotional components to learning Braille that we, we heard from our learners. And then another um, thing we heard is- um, I, and I, Can I say something real sure, quick there, Kim? Absolutely. Is, you know, that emotional thing, you know, I can relate to as somebody that learned Braille later in life. There were two really emotional moments for me. And one of those was, was uh, coming, to, and a lot of it was acceptance, I guess, uh, is what we were seeing from our learners. You know, it's that moment of the white cane. Right. Well, the other moment was Braille. And so that acceptance, that emotional part of that was was very hard. So sorry, Kim, I just wanted to. No, oh, no, that's fine. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Another thing that we heard is I don't have a player. I don't know how to use the player. I don't want to use the player. So we knew that audio delivery was something that our learners were struggling with. So, Doug, next slide. Yeah. OK. So something that, that we wanted to do is to find out where our learners were, where, where were they emotionally, you know, where were they cognitively, um, you know, what made them thrive, what empowered them. So from listening to all that, we, we heard, you know, I just want to be able to label my medication. I want to be able to read the elevator. Um, I'd like to be able to read room signs. So from that, we started to develop our braille for everyday use workbook because we started to hear from our learners i want to use it in my everyday life to begin with you know we knew that we probably could move these learners into readers once they were successful so as we began to develop this braille for everyday use um, program you know of course we had to teach the braille code we had to embed the psychology of learning, you know, what is the cognitive load with what we're doing? You know, how do we build in metacognition? You know, how do we build in instant feedback? So all of those technical components had to be in this, but how do we keep it simple? Because we heard that it needed to be simple. It didn't need to be overwhelming. So what we did decide to do, because what we did find out during our, our data search is that greater than 80% of our um, learners had usable vision. In fact, we had some people tell us that, you know, they were trying to learn it visually, that just the Braille books that we had in the former, uh, the, the last courses. So we did to decide to take the dual media approach. We decided to do large print and Braille. So Doug, go ahead and move to the next slide. So what we began to do was to build in these predictable patterns. We wanted to reduce that cognitive load. So they weren't trying to guess, what do I do on this page? What do I do next? We started to build in that very predictable patterning. So when they approach, they're learning that first letter, they know I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this. So that we could really put the focus on the Braille and not the instructions. So every single workbook begins in the upper left-hand corner 
with a tactile symbol. In this case, it's a B. Um, and one reason we did that is <clears throat> we felt like it could navigate the learner in this page, the new learner to Braille, these new tactile you know, new tactile skills. So every single page in the series, even through contracted Braille, will have Braille in the upper left, left hand corner. Also, another component is they didn't know numbers. So we couldn't really page, we couldn't put page numbers on there. So we needed to make it Braille specific so that when they called one of our Braille teachers or Braille experts, they could know which page they're on and then help them through that page. Uh, also, another part of that upper left hand corner symbol is that's the target or the focus for what we're going to teach them on that page. Go ahead to the next one, Doug. So something that we did decide to do is that we decided to put a middle line and the middle line is large print and it is Braille. That again was for navigation because we were going to start teaching above this line and we were going to start teaching below this line. So we felt like this could be a huge navigational aspect of what we're doing. Uh, also above the line with the uh, large print, we started to give, we, we're showing them that large print Braille cell. And then we're trying to give them hints, you know, the letter B, it's like buttons lined up on a shirt. So we're trying to give hints to them. And what we found out in testing is that they loved the hints. So we felt like that was something that we needed to embed within these learning projects. Uh, Doug, you can go to the next one. So something that we decided to do below that midline is we felt like this was a safe zone because we'd heard from our learners that they were trying to read this visually. So what we felt like we could do is, you know, for the learners that had vision, usable vision, they could go ahead, go ahead and look at the, you know, how these dots are lined up. But below that line, feel safe to let's go ahead and try it. Let's go ahead and use your fingers, you know, not your vision in this and put your fingers on it. And for the, when we introduce a new symbol, especially the letters, it's just a letter B and we're starting to embed and just feel that letter B. You know, we, we guide them from put your finger on the first, you know, symbol, move from left to right. So we're starting to guide them through because we want them to begin to touch this and to feel successful. And we felt like that once we get their fingers on there and they complete this first page, just scanning these three lines, 100% success. You know, it's their first encounter with, I can read Braille now. I, I think I can do this. So it was really important that we had that safe zone um, for below the line. Again, um, very predictable. The pages, if you see the program, it's very predictable. The learners don't have to guess what's going to happen. They know from page to page what's going to be asked. Also, we're building in that instant feedback. You know, that that was another aspect. We needed to have them read a line of Braille or symbol and then give them the feedback. So we're saying, hey, yeah, you got this. This is this is this symbol, this letter. Um, next page, Doug. Something else that we really wanted to do in this, we heard so many learners tell us that they really wanted to use Braille in their everyday life. So we decided to, um, to sort of, um, focus on three to four symbols at a time. So in this first sport book, we focused on A, B, and C. And then we've taken the learner, you know, through these, this is the last one of the last pages um, on the um, workbook. And it's a page that's sort of, sort of like your culminating activity or you review, hey, you've learned A, B, and C now. And then what we do is we give them print Braille stickers. And then we start to tell them, hey, here's some print braille stickers. You can use it to label, you know, your aspirin, you know, anything that begins with these letters. And I can remember in um, pilot testing, we had this one lady when she got to this page and we gave her these stickers. She was so excited. She's like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to take this sticker and I'm going to put it on my aspirin now. You know, sometimes we we. Um, forget or we take for granted that, you know, someone would know that. So we start to give them throughout the entire program, we start to look at real ways that someone could use this Braille. Also, once the learner gets to letter W, we send them a Braille print um, 
pillbox because we're wanting them to engage with this braille and see how this braille will empower them in their, you know, in their lives. Um, another thing, as we, as you move through um, the series, we have labels such as on and off, you know, um, we have some measurements and they're all labels that the learner can take at the end of these focus letters or, you know, focus symbols as, as you move through and then actually use these. Um, also, after they complete the first number book, we will send them and you know, all of this is free of charge. We will send them a Braille labeler because at that point, you know, they're at a point that they can label, start to label. They can read letters. They can read numbers. So we want them to experience that. And then, you know, as an instructor, the more times they put their hands on that Braille, the better Braille readers there they'll be. So we're starting to put them in that real life um, situation because we really want to encourage them, hey, read this Braille. This, you know, we love Braille. We want them to love Braille. So next, Doug. Okay, so um, after a lot of testing and a lot of prototypes with our workbook, I mean, we, we really knew that we had something that was going to work for our learners. And then came another tricky part, was we had to, we had to figure out how to deliver our audio. Now, remember our, our target market, our target population, well, they can no longer read or they struggle to read regular print now, uh, if they can even read it at all. And so they're having to learn how to listen as well to engage with, the, with, our, with our information. So we had to find a way to deliver our audio. And what we wanted to do was we wanted to use the most simplistic and most barrier-free way to do that. So we really did consider six different things. Uh, we were already using the National Library Service for the Blind's cartridges and their players. We're sort of leveraging them. But as Kim mentioned, that turned into be a huge barrier because people wanted to come. They wanted to instantly start learning Braille. Well, if they didn't have another means of listening to our audio uh, through a USB cartridge that we could send them, they had to use, they had to then sign up for the National Library Service. They had to learn how to use that player. So that was a barrier. They were having to learn something that they didn't even really anticipate having to do before they could even get to the Braille. So that was one of our things. But we, we still wanted to keep that in our sites because we thought, well, how can we improve that? Maybe we, there's a way we can prove it. Um, another way that we consider was the Hadley website. It's, and, you know, why not? Um, our tactile Braille has always at Hadley kind of been hidden on our website. Uh, but how great would it be for our Braille to live with all of our other cool contents that's already there? Because um, people have already always kind of had complained about having to dig for that uh, on our website. Uh, we considered smart speakers, um, like maybe the Apple um, HomePod or the Google Home, or the Amazon Echo, uh, kicked about around about saying, hey, you know who, uh, play Braille for everyday use. And how, how cool would it be if that would play? So we considered that. We considered about uh, sending some type of mail out device, like a small MP3 player. A lot of difficulties with that. It's really hard to find an inexpensive, accessible MP3 player that we could send out in mass. Uh, a telephony system, uh, just simply a telephone system, very simple. Everybody has a telephone, uh, and you can actually get a hold of our, uh, you know, get a hold of our content from anywhere. Then you could learn on a subway or a train, or even sitting at the doctor's office. And then there's a company called Real Sam that approached us out of Australia. They've recently launched in the U.S. I think they're they're pretty, uh, they're known and at especially at you guys at RNIB in the U.K. You're familiar with Real Sam. So those were our six things that we really did a lot of research on, and we landed on two finally. Because remember, we were looking for bear free, barrier free and simplistic. Uh, we decided on using the Hadley website, which is really exciting again, because then Braille lives, the audio lives with everything else on our website. I mean, Hadley was born on Braille 100 years ago. So it's really cool that it lives on our website with other, all of our other content now. And we decided on a telephony system. So again, everyone has a phone. And this means that if you have your phone to drive the audio, you can listen from anywhere. So with both of those, with the website and the phone systems, we had to start from scratch. We had to build both of those models from the ground up. 
took everyone at Hadley to do this. Our media production, our marketing was heavily involved, our IT department. So, uh, so it took everybody at Hadley really to do everything with this new way of uh, that we're approaching Braille. So, uh, so you know what? Let's take a look at each one of these and how each one of these work. So, let's first look at the Hadley website. So, uh, and you know, this is this is kind of for more of our tech savvy learner, I guess. Uh, but imagine that you've already signed up for uh, Braille for Everyday Use. And you've been sent your workbook and you've received that and it's you have it, your workbook right in front of you. All you have to do is go to the Hadley website. And, the, you know, the cool thing is sit right there on the page with the audio. You have a help button. So if you need help with Braille at any time, you click that help button and you can instantly be contacted you know, or connected with a Hadley Braille expert. So that's kind of cool. You get instant support right there. All right, so this slide is really cool. I wanted to share it because this is our elevator slide and people have been asking about learning, you know, about the buttons on the elevator for us for a long time now. So, uh, so now we've assumed or we've, we're pretending that we've already learned our alphabet. Uh, we've already learned our numbers up to this point. So let's give this, uh, let's give this a listen. This is our audio for, for our, on our, on our website and for our Braille, our elevator slide here. Page 29. Field the numbers three and four in the top left corner of the page. Now that you know all the numbers, that'll make taking an elevator so much easier. Each elevator you use might be different, but knowing what buttons to expect will be helpful. Below the middle line, you'll find four circles stacked from top to bottom with numbers next to them. These circles are like the buttons in an elevator. Scan to find which floor number is at the top. If you said four, that's correct. Did you notice another shape on the bottom row? In elevators, often there are special shapes you can feel to help find the floor you're looking for. The shape here is a star. A star is often next to the number for the main floor of the building, or the floor you'd use to exit the building. Which floor is the main floor here? And you're noticing that we put, put wait or pause times in here to give you time to look at the workbook as you're listening. The first floor is the main floor. Turn the page. All right. And so uh, everything's super accessible. If you're on a PC or a Mac, you can just pause by hitting the space bar and uh, going to the next slide is as easy as hitting the right arrow on your computer. So that is our online version. So let's check out our telephony system here. And um, you know, this is really to be used on the go. I, you know. And I, and I say this is, is for maybe the not as not as tech savvy person, but I would actually use this one because, uh, you know, you're on the go. You can learn Braille from anywhere. So, again, you've received your you've uh, called the Braille for Everyday Use and you've received your workbook. You have your workbook right in front of you. You call our Braille for Everyday Use phone number. And uh, now you can just listen there on your phone. I'll tell you another cool feature of this though, you know, talking about Braille support is you can just press the zero at any time if something's confusing to be connected right to a Braille expert. It calls them directly and uh, you can speak to them there. So, uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and just play this. Now, this is an actual recording of, uh, of, our, uh, of our telephony system here. So I'll just click to get this going. Hadley presents Braille for Everyday Use. To learn letters, press or say one. Welcome to Braille for Everyday Use Letters. For letters A through C, press or say one. You will need your Braille workbook for letters A through C to begin. If you don't already have one, press the number zero on your phone's keypad and we'll mail one right out to you. This workshop will take approximately 35 minutes to complete. All right, let's get started. Turn the page in your workbook. 
And when you're ready, press the number one key or just say one to continue. Page one. Use your fingers to feel the braille in the top left corner of the page. Letters are formed using a combination of six dots. When all six dots are used, it's called a full braille cell. A full braille cell can... Okay, we'll let that push forward there for us. So yeah, but that's just an example of our telephony system. And then you press the one to continue going to the next page. You can press two to go back and it teaches you all this as you progress through it, all the keys that you would use. So yeah, that's that's the telephony system. Sorry to interrupt, Doug, but... Yeah. Not or you problem. could just say one and that yep. will move you through. So we, we during pilot testing, we found out that a lot of learners love that. So before we listen to this next clip, you, Doug mentioned that we pilot tested and we pilot tested over and over and over. And we pilot tested every single aspect of it. Um, we changed the binding because we heard that, you know, we were using a comb binding and there a lot of learners said, oh, I don't like that. It's hard to turn the pages. It hurts my fingers. What we realized too in, in our first um, iteration of this is that the upper left corner braille was too close to the binding for a man or for someone with larger fingers. So we moved it. Uh, and then a funny side note is I was the voice for the first um, pilot testing and um, voice is very important and most people were good with it but we had one lady say she's she, because they asked you know what about the voice and what about the pace and one lady said well she's nice but she's like nice bossy so apparently I was using my teacher voice so you know the voice was very important the pauses were very important but you know we pilot tested the workbook are the directions clear um the the um using the different voices, um, using the different, the, the audio, you know, how would they use that? So every step of the way was pilot tested. So uh, here you're going to hear one of our early pilot testers. Um, he has uh, his glasses on, he has a visor on, and he has a magnification device on. So this is what he was doing when he started the pilot testing. So he was ready to really look at this. So let's listen to what he said about um, the, the very first iteration of the pilot. Okay, Doug. I thought it was um, amazing. Um, at the risk of gushing on about this, I never uh, used anything like this. Um, it's, it's unique, it's accessible, um, I was never stymied by any part of it. The book took away all of that um, intimidation and in conjunction with the narrator was very calming and very soothing. Nothing was rushed. You could move at your own pace. It was a, a tremendous learning experience. There's a lot more to having vision impairment than just being vision impaired. There's a huge emotional impact in this. And you don't need to be feeling like you've been sidelined. And this, learning this with this system brings you back to a more full life yeah you know and then and that's a very typical reaction that we got from every person very emotional that call it. you could hear the emotion in his voice when he talked about being sidelined uh so th that was very uh, just a very typical reaction there mm -hmm. so let me push this forward here mm -hmm. so where are we now um right now for our enrollments we opened our new program in january of this year we've had over two thousand enrollments um something that we do we ask for feedback we ask the question was this helpful to you 98 percent said yes it was it was helpful to them um then we ask for comments you know do you have anything you want to say about this so i'm going to read some of the comments that that we have um i'm proud of myself i'm proud i could read sentences 
I'm proud of myself and I re and I'm proud of myself and I'm really learning Braille. I was surprised and excited I completed the workbook. Why didn't I do this sooner? And then some of the impact that we're hearing is I love the elevator page. I can use my elevator now. Um, I labeled my measuring cups. Um, I labeled one man was so excited when he received the on and off label in, in that specific workbook. He called one of he actually called our, our Braille team leader to tell her how excited he, he was and that he actually labeled his. And then we we've heard I can play cards with my grandchild. So we started hearing these things and hearing the impact that Braille's having on these adults. Okay, Doug. Yeah, so brings us to the most important part of this is uh, how can we sign up for this? Well, we actually have two ways to sign up. You can go to the Hadley website at Hadley, H-A-D-L-E-Y dot E-D-U. Click on the Braille button that's there and all of our Braille content is going to show up. So you'll want to go to the Braille for Everyday Use letters to sign up for that or Probably the easiest way for me would be to, you can simply just call. We have an 800 number, 1-800-323-4238, and we can get you signed right up for that, uh, for our Braille for Everyday Use uh, letters. And um, it's as easy as that. And, you know, as always, you know, this is totally free for our learners who uh, are, have a visual impairment. Right, Kim, is there anything else yeah, that we should Absolutely. Have so, you know, what we have now, we're building these and we're, we're launching them as we build them. So now uh, what we currently have live is we have the alphabet series. We have the number series, you know, numbers, you know, punctuation associated with numbers. Uh, we have the punctuation series. And then the first week of July, we will have a writing series. Uh, we have videos that... Um, for tactile reading techniques, you know, beginner hand movements, um, advanced hand movements, uh, how to use a braille writer, how to use a slate and stylus, how to use a labeler. We also have live discussion groups. We have one that meets once a month on Thursdays. It's called Embracing Braille uh, to support our braille. And that's, you know, we, we have two, two um, Hadley braille experts to do that. And it's, it's based on, you know, that peer interaction, the support from others that are learning Braille, and, and, and they take the cue from the learner. What do you want to talk about next? They survey and say, what do you want to talk about next? So it's totally learner-based. It's totally learner-centric. So um, stay tuned for um, the remainder yeah, of the we'll writing series releasing, and uh, contracted Braille, Braille soon. Yeah, later this, later this fall, right? Yes. So that's... That's what we have, and we're very yeah. excited. So that's our presentation there. So, um, you know, one thing that really excites me about every single aspect of this is that you can get immediate uh, support from a Braille expert. Yes. I mean, you, whether it's through the website, whether it's by calling in, you're not out there alone. And you can learn at your own pace. You can mm -hmm. order these books as you finish them. And, uh, and but, you, but you're not all alone. You have the discussion group that Kim just mentioned, and you also have a Braille expert that can help you on demand when you need it. Yes, we have well, thank you, thank you, Kim and Doug so much. What a great and innovative way uh, to teach Braille. I get excited whenever anyone new learns Braille at any age, um, even though I learned when I was tiny, but uh, yeah. it's just amazing to, to how you researched every facet of that, how you uh, tested every facet of it within the community. I just think it's it's brilliant, and I'm I'm so excited uh, to hear about it. And Anthony, I'll pass it over to you, and we can open up for questions. Thank you, Kim. We do have a couple of hands up. We can go first to Iwana. Hi, thanks for taking my call. This is really fascinating and. I was amazed at the, the, the depth of research that you did. Uh, I, I'm curious because myself, I'm uh, now involved with the library that is uh, with SILA library that is sending out accessible print and we are providing lots of tech support. And do you have certain hours? Do you get back to the people right away if they need help? Like how, how flexible is this support that we provide them the live on uh, demand, on demand support? 
we usually have, we're open. We usually have someone on staff from, from 8 a.m. and we are central time, 8 a.m. till about 6 p.m. So during those wow. times, but someone can leave a message, they can leave a chat, and then someone will get back to you first thing the next morning. Wow, that, that's really very nice because I think uh, the idea that you have a good chance of somebody being right there on the line as you're working. Yes. So that you don't break momentum and okay, <laughs> absolutely maybe back next day. Mm -hmm. but yeah. That's exactly so what much. we wanted. Thank you for the question. And yeah, and if you call between those hours, you will be able to get someone. You will we get have someone. multiple, multiple yes. Braille People. experts on staff. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Alexa. <laughs> Hi, Kim and Douglas. I Hi. just wanted to say absolutely phenomenal presentation. Thank you. Um, I'm Alexa. I'm a Braille fashion designer, so I completely understand right. the importance of Braille and really bringing it into the everyday life experience. Uh, so on that note, I actually have two questions. Um, I absolutely commend you on the testing that you did going through every piece, even down to changing the actual coil for the binding. I'm curious how large those uh, pilot groups actually were. Uh, we we probably had about 30 total. And right. we had we had people with, you know, we were trying to target the 50 plus and, and, and we did had that age. We had people with various levels of vision, people with, you know, no vision. So we had we tried to get a very diverse group of people mm -hmm. uh, also geographically diverse. You know, where are they located? So mm -hmm. we tried to get a nice diverse group of people. Yeah, and Phenomenal we, we to also, hear. Oh, sorry, Dan, yeah, I'm sorry, Dan, sorry. Sorry to just step on you there. Um, so we we also wanted to get a few people who had dropped out of our previous yes. course, yes. so that we could compare. Yes. You know, them between that course and what they were getting we here, did. and mm -hmm. we we just had a tremendous res positive response. The other mm -hmm. one, they they felt like they were getting too much material at once. Mm -hmm. They were overwhelmed. Time they were afraid limits. because they would open it up and it would be nothing but a single page of Braille. And that's really mm -hmm. one thing that drove the desire to do dual media so that it would pull you mm -hmm. into the book and it would be less intimidating to actually see something right. on the page and not just be scared that, oh, gosh, there's this page of something that, right. I, that I have to interact with that, I, that I'm afraid of. You know, right. so, so, yeah, did we, we did Something else is that, you know, for every single enrollment, one of our Braille experts will reach out to the person, whether it's email or phone, they will always reach out to them to see mm -hmm. if they have any questions. They will reach out then through the course of uh, their learning experience. They're always there. You know, not only can the person call them automatically, but they're going to reach out to you uh, unless they say, hey, please don't call me anymore. Please don't email me anymore. They're going to ask you, do you need any help? Is there something that's not clear? And then, you know, as a researcher, something that I'm always looking at is we're, we're always going to refine what we have. I mean, we know we like what we have. We think it's great. But from our learners, you know, we, we're wanting that data saying, oh, you know, this was confusing. So we're looking at our instructions. We're looking at our words. We will always refine this based on what the learner is telling us. Yeah, it will never be done. We it will that. never be done because is what I tell everybody. Be. It's a little scary yeah. to That's some phenomenal. People. And that's the way that it should be. There's always room for improvement. Everyone Absolutely. has a diverse perspective and unique lived experience. There's always room for improvement. You guys Absolutely. are doing a phenomenal piece. Thank Last you. thing I wanted to quickly mention, and just quick, because there's so many hands up because you guys did amazing. Um, you mentioned the page relating to uh, the elevator and the numbers. I'm curious mm -hmm. if the work part if the workbook includes any mentions to like color specifically and working sort of through fashion and wardrobe and that everyday aspect. There are there are some as you move through when once a learner starts to read a little more, we start we you know we start talking about real things like okay, you're gonna go to a party. Uh, some of it does have colors. Uh, so we do try to build those things in, you know, just the it, we tried to think of absolutely any encounter a person would have in their daily life. That's why we have the electrical panel box. So mm -hmm. yes, we do have some of that built in. That's amazing. Just a last quick note. Uh, I love how you mentioned that you gift the pill boxes after reaching the W to really be able to integrate. 
Um, our company, I design, we create hangers that have customizable Braille. Oh, wow. So whether that be the cool. color or the style of item or your name that you're sharing uh, with someone. And uh, perhaps that could be a really awesome collaboration to gift if you did have that, that color or that great. fashion sector well, of yeah. your booklet. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Oh, sure. Yeah. We, hey. I think we have Kirby. <laughs> Kirby online. So yeah. he probably is looking at your email. So he may reach out to him to you or you can reach out to him. Yeah. Phenomenal. Or one of us. Again. Yeah. Okay. So we've we've got, yeah, we've got lots of interest here. Uh Monique. Monique Mariani, you're still muted. Okay, maybe you stepped away. We'll go down the list. Uh Natalie. All right, well, thank you so much to you both. Um, really, really exciting, I agree. Um, we often refer our our adult Braille learner members of BLC to Hadley, so thanks so Yay. much for sharing everything <laughs> thank you. that you do. Um, and I just had two quick questions. The first mm -hmm. is for the phone option, um, I assume that, that people can call uh, your toll free, free numbers so that if we have Canadian participants, they can use that option. I don't there think it's our toll free number, it's a Twilio. So there's oh, there's no charge okay. to the learner okay, other perfect. than their dad on their cell phone. Okay, you know. got it. Excellent, thank you. And then my other question was, I'm really excited to hear that there will be a contracted Braille oh, um, yes. follow up because that doesn't always happen for adult Braille learners mm -hmm. that that's encouraged. Yeah. So I'm super excited about yes. that. Yes. Is, can you say a few words, if you know already, about what mm -hmm. that might look like? Absolutely. The, the content is written. You know, it, it just takes us a bit to produce it, to get the audio. You know, the, the guy that's doing the audio is a, a voice talent. Um, but we're teaching every single contraction. We're teaching electronic Braille, um, but we're teaching it in more of a, okay, you want to write a, um, a trip list. You want to write a gift list. You want to write a recipe. So we're teaching it the conventional way, but we're still targeting in that upper left corner. Mm -hmm. Now, when we do move to Braille, we, we did keep the middle line for a little while. Uh, as a navigational piece, but that does go away in contracted Braille, and then it starts the whole page because we're we're wanting that learner to, of course, read a whole page, read more than one page. But you know, we're teaching the the conventional Braille code. We're just sort of guiding them through it, and we're trying to, you know, we're we're embedding the contractions in words. Um, labels and then we're having them find it we're trying to make it very engaging so they read a line of text or mm. labels and they pick the right answer and then giving them uh instant feedback yeah and we wanted to braille for everyday use to be a springboard into yes. contracted braille so they will be familiar with exactly how it yes. works and contracted if they've gone through this uh, you can yeah. pick it up in contracted braille you know if yes, you're you ready can. for that mm -hmm. you matter of fact that's the beauty of all of this, you can start wherever you want to start uh, with our Braille. So yes. if you if you need a refresher, you on know, your that's short forms, well. you know, you, you yeah. can just jump in each time. Something else that I, I would like to say is we do have a, a visual Braille for families and professional learners. And something that we heard is families, you know, the 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 sighted members of the family want to learn with someone who's going to become a braille reader so we tried to align those a bit so the sighted reader could go online and learn and then our tactile learner because we wanted it to be the experience they wanted if they wanted a partner or a family member to uh, learn braille with them we're very happy for that yeah we have a visual braille on the website yes. as well amazing thank okay. you so much mm -hmm. uh peg Peg might have stepped away. Okay, uh, Louise. The reminder: it's it is um, Alt A for those who want to unmute on the computer. Okay, I think my question has sort of been answered. Hi, I'm Louise. Thank you so much. Hi, Louise. Because oh, I learned Braille as I learned oh, Braille as an adult, <laughs> but I use Grade One Braille very much only. So I if I decided that. to start with, um, so if I wanted to take up the punctuation one and then go into the contracted to Refresh yes. because of course I learned before you Braille came in. So uh -huh. changing over to that, that's my biggest fear. Right. Is, right. 
you know, not, you get in a grade two book, sometimes you don't know what contraption is, you don't sure. know what you're reading or you're using it. So I could pick up and start with the punctuation when you guys would not sit there and say, well, why don't you know, you're, you know, you right. don't need to do the numbers and letters. True. And that's one of the design components we wanted. We wanted adult learners should have choices. They should be in control of their learning. We want you to come in and pick up where you need to be that suit your needs. So absolutely call and, mm. and join us. Yep. Well, thank you so much because I mean, I know most of the contractions, but just having a refreshment, maybe there's something sure. new in the UEB or something that I can't sure. remember or it's, haven't used. I'll you tell know. you a highlight. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Attractive okay. girl will be fun. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. looking forward to doing the, doing the two of them. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, great. I'll mute and let someone else get a question. I think I'm unmuted now. Can you hear me? Yes, Peg, go ahead. Sorry, I think my screen had changed. No, just uh, the phone system um, was really fascinating and it's wonderful. I'm just curious whether there is an optional interactive component whereby if a learner is, is reading maybe a, a word or a phrase or something, if they wanted to have someone at your end listen to them read it or just make sure they're reading it correctly is that yes oh. they, that's the zero or the help button you know zero, online yeah. we'll connect them our our braille experts are there to meet the need of the learner the individual learner right. okay so absolutely. the learner would take the initiative to say okay i want somebody to hear yes. my my absolutely my okay perfect thank you now as kim but kim did mention earlier that our braille experts do reach out we'll reach yes, out to they you. will ask you <laughs> You know, uh, so uh, so you're not going to order the book. You'll be, you know, they'll reach out then. But uh, yeah, which I think is is unique for us. So it's you get a lot of support. You get a lot of support hearing from us, and then calling. You know, whenever you feel like you need some assistance. Sure. Okay, so we've got we've got a couple hands. We've got well, we'll have time for one or two more, perhaps. Um, Davina. Yes. Hi. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. Yes. Great. Uh, I think my question is, well, just to let you know, I learned my Braille from Hadley and I'm now teaching hey. Braille to adults and I probably referred hundreds of students to you oh, guys, great. but I, you. I love Hadley. Um, one question is, do you guys still use or offer the Braille readiness curriculum where you teach them how to like move their hands, finger pressure, all that stuff? We, we don't offer it as an individual course. What we did is we built in the very basic techniques in uh, the Braille for Everyday Use, but we also have more content that gives more in depth, you know, the beginning hand yeah. movements, the advanced hand movements. So yes, we do have those. It's just not, you don't have to take that first course first. Mm -hmm. You can get into it, experience it and go, hey, you know, I want to do this. However, what we do, what we do encourage is our Braille experts, when they call you, they will talk to you about that and they will suggest okay. that. Yeah, because yeah, I think that's all of, very important. Yeah, it all is. of that's embedded within yes. the coursework. You the don't scanning. know that you're actually learning, scanning, yes. learning, tracking. <laughs> It's embedded right. within it. it you know? So we try to you, stay. Yeah. We try to stay away from all those technical terms because they mm -hmm. kind of scare people. But we do have, like they're you in said, there. the workshops that can guide you through those. Yes, it starts Sounds out good. heavy into every single step, and then we start to fade those prompts because you start to learn those. Right. Right. Uh, Great. Thank you. Yeah, Tracy. Hi. Um, I'm curious for the phone in. Do you have to use a smartphone or do you have a conventional phone component because there could be people who um, have lost their sight and they aren't ready to do that kind of right. interaction right. with their mobile phone. Mm -hmm. Right. You can use either. So yes. either one, either in, right. any kind of phone will work. And we right. really insisted upon that. We wanted, right. you know, we know we had a lot of learners that wanted to use their landline phone still. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you can use your smartphone as well. Yes, so and we, we did pilot test that. We, you know, we had users using landlines, different types of phones. Yeah. Uh, so we, we tried to pilot test and, and cover all of those to make yeah. sure it works. Yeah. Okay. Um, just going back is, Manik, are you still, are you here now? Do you have a question? Alt-A to unmute if you're on computer. No, nope, guess not. Uh, okay, last question then, Jennifer Brown. Yes, hi. Um, hi. 
Congratulations to you both. It sounds like this was uh, a lot of hard work and a real labor of love at that. For sure. Um, I am a, a teacher of the visually impaired and I'm very new to it at that. And I work with young Braille users and uh, some are dual users. And my question for you today is, do you see this program and this workbook um, being useful for teaching young learners who are just beginning with Braille? Is it the right fit for them? Um, is it available for purchase? You know, those are some of my questions. Or um, is there another program that's similar that you would recommend? I'll answer that. Jennifer, for years, I taught um, kindergarten and first grade at a school for the blind. Um, and and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, this program is not designed with all of the components for literacy. Mm -hmm. This program is designed for adults who were readers before that. So, you know, if, if I were, you know, a TBI in a public school with young children or I went to school for the blind, it would have very limited use. I mean, it's very good for practice, for learning those letters, but it's not going to be a complete literacy program. So, um, APH has the uh, building on patterns. I mean, I'm, I taught out of the older patterns program for years. It was and still is very effective. You know, I, I knew several of the writers work with Dr. Mila Truen. So it can be used in conjunction. You just have to have so many things in your toolbox. It, so I, we didn't pilot test it with children. So I'd be very skeptical to really say yes or no. Fair enough. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, well, thank. Oh, oh, does it me... work now? Does it work now? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, thank God. I'm yes. sorry. <laughs> I was. I did a, a false maneuver. I'm sorry. Uh, so yes, I am Monique Mariani from Braille Institute in Los Angeles. Hi. Um, okay. Hi. First of all, it seems really very extremely fascinating. I'm really uh, interested in in your course, but I wanted to know something. The fact that it's. Um, uh, print braille uh, yes. is it made only for low vision people or also for uh, people who have who have become totally blind it's just it is designed for both and we did pilot test it with both you know we we have we have the large print for the people with usable vision but we yes. designed with someone with no vision mm -hmm. and we did pilot test with it with several people you know that had no usable vision and it worked beautifully with them also yeah, and oh. both audio components, whether it's the online yes. or the phone, are completely accessible. Yes. Even if right. you have no vision at all. Can I ask a very quick question? And maybe it's silly, and forgive me if it is. But the point is, the fact that you introduce only ABC at the beginning, what do you do with it? I mean, we cannot do much, many words apart from cab. <laughs> so because, Absolutely. <laughs> right. So what, how do you implement you, your first pages? Without, you know, without going into a lot of detail, right. you know, we start with, you know, the A, B, and C. We start to have them to actually discriminate between those. Uh, we start to put them, we actually do some um, activities within a box because we feel like that if a person is wanting to read Braille, you know, in the environment, they're going to be within some type of label. So we start to sort of do like that. But yes, we are very limited with words. Right. But we, we do start once you get into D, E, F, and G, that's the next set of letters. Okay. We start to, but we, we do, we start from letters. You know, we, it's, it's a very sequence. We start from letters. And then, of course, we start moving the letters together. Yeah. and start you know letting someone you know know you have two letters if you have if you know the d and the f you can label dog food as opposed to you know a can of tomatoes right so we mm -hmm. we just you know sequence that and then of course we start into words we start into sentences the whole thing paragraphs right. okay. everything you know yeah the idea with the the initial books that you get are yes. for labeling uh, yes. and and you would be surprised at the people who weren't even aware that of, of thinking or hadn't even had in their no. head about labeling, being able no. to label something uh -huh. was like a, uh, a light bulb moment for a lot of people. So mm -hmm. yeah, you are, you're limited in what you can yes. do, but the labeling we found is a big deal. And they quickly, the you actually quickly booted okay. this. I mean, the lessons mm -hmm. are, are no more than 30. The book will take you no more than 30 minutes to get through. Yes. So, and you will uh -huh. quickly get the next book. And so, you know, it, it, you move through pretty, we found that people are moving through pretty quickly. Well, thank you very thank much. You. 
Thanks. thanks very much for all of the great questions we've had. And thanks very much for your presentation about the, uh, the exciting new program that Hadley has here. And I'm glad to see that it's it's been so well received.